Right now, I'm in New York City at the beautiful Riverside Park. I want to thank you for this wonderful interview. Oh, thank you so much for, for having me and for asking me. I, I really enjoy talking to you. So, when I was younger and I learned about all the data of, of, uh, about exercise and how important it was to especially retard dementia a little bit and, and help to slow down aging. The very first data that came out said that moving, exercise, things like jogging were important. But um, something like tennis was even more important because you were learning steps along with it. And I was younger then and could, it was easier for me to do active things like that, play tennis. However, as I've gotten a little bit older uh, and, and, a, and a, also a Tai Chi studio became available to me, I decided I would like to try Tai Chi as something quieter. I was amazed at the feeling of gracefulness of movement that I felt, the grace that I could feel in my body, just, you know, the, my arms, everything that felt graceful, but it was an internal grace that was transferred from those movements. And for me, that was very rewarding, what I call the reward. And it's the message I have as a neuroscientist that Tai Chi needs to be rewarding for the people who are doing it. And people get many different rewards from Tai Chi, I think. The source is different. For me, and for dancers, I think, it's just just the movement, just the movement is really enough. It's so beautiful, that, that feeling of grace and internal grace. For others, it's the, it's the reduction in pain, which may come a little later, actually, but they have the motivation to do Tai Chi because of the, the pain reduction. And for others, the motivation is there, and then there's some reward when they see improvement, because they do feel that this is going to impact their health. Now, all those things are, you know, absolutely true. It's, it's going to impact their health. And it's, a, you know, it's going to reduce pain, too, for, for people um, as time goes by. The thing, especially perhaps for teachers to keep in mind, is the more that you can make it enjoyable in the moment for the students, really the better. That, that can be the hook. You're trying to induce motivation to come back because what is needed for sure is practice, practice, practice. And, and that leads me to just want to say another thing because as a lifelong student of the motor system and in the brain control of the motor system and the somatosensory system, I think it's important to realize that there are three, you talk about motor control, you know, that there are three important parts of the motor system. And one of them we all know as reflexes. There's this area here, the brain stem. See, it's like the stem of a flower, the stem, here's the whole brain, the petals. So here's the stem where reflexes are controlled, we're, all, we're so much like other mammals. Reflexes for eye movements, reflexes for swallowing, reflexes for breathing are here. And as a matter of fact, it's right down here too where the reward system begins. 
our reward system. Oddly enough, you know, we need a system for knowing that water tastes good when we're thirsty. Okay? Just the way we're totally unconscious of the need for an anti-gravity system. But it's there too. So these are the very basic reflex systems. Then there's this middle system here, which perhaps for us is the most important as, as practices, practicers of Tai Chi. It's, the, it's where we form habits. We use this newer cortex. This is the, the motor and sensory cortex here. In humans, it's very well developed. It's the, it's the way, it's the voluntary part of the system. When you tell us um, to reach our arm out, you know, like, like this, that's the voluntary part of the system. The messages are also going deep into the habit system, but they have to go many times, many times to form that habit. Dopamine is one of the chemicals that helps us to form these habits. Now we need this basic system just to be standing up against gravity. As you say, you know, we, we need the upright. Um, but as, as we practice, and as we do this many times, as we begin the brush knee movement, all right, and do this many times, we're beginning to form the habit here in the center of the brain. It's an older part of the brain. Uh, and all of these systems, the, the newer part, the voluntary, the habit-forming part, and the reflex part, are working together for sure. But for us, this habit area, it's called the, the basal ganglia, it happens to be called the basal ganglia, and how it interacts with the reward system using dopamine. That's, that's, that's key, I think, for motivating us and for bringing us to, we won't say the, the right movements, but we combine the voluntary, you know. And, and then it becomes, as it becomes more internal and more of a habit and more unconscious, shall we say, uh, then it's easier to layer the other things that you talk about. Then it's easier to layer the little bit of force behind something. Once we've got, once we've got this down, you know, as a habit, then we can push a little, then we can think about pushing a little easier because we don't have to think about the reach. Then we can think about the energy a little bit more. So it's, it's so important if even five minutes a day, you know, even a little bit of time a day, even for me, if I sit in the car, sometimes I'll just do this, you know, just these reminders, just as much as we can to make it a part of our habit system. That's what I think is so important. One other thing I'd just like to say to you also is uh, for teachers, especially, and for students, while I've been here at this workshop, you might have noticed that one of the things I've tried to do is I try to get as close to you as possible. You know, <laughs> I come up front, all right? Or, or next to one of the facilitators. So we have neurons in our brains that are, actually they happen to be like right here and right here, and they have to do with the somatosensory system very much so, but um, they're called mirror neurons. And when I do a movement like this, there will be act neural activity in that part of the brain. But when I, I can just sit here like this, and if you do that movement, uh, the same part of the brain will fire off. So it's, it's, it doesn't mean mirror in the sense that you use it for you know, doing the opposite. It means that there's a neur there are neurons in my brain that move when I move like this, but when you move like that, they also move. So, and the closer I am to you, the more detail I see in that movement. And the more I can mirror your movement. 
and your motivation and and get the details so that mirror system is variable from people to pe person to person I should say it's variable and it's dependent actually by the way on hormones like oxytocin and vasopressin it has to do with the empathy system too so it's variable across people um, but the more each of us can use that system to get close to the to the masters <laughs> you know the the better the better we will be able to absorb it into that habit system too wow that's interesting uh, ever since i was learning i always interested to meet the experts on certain things and just being there just being close it's my instinct. I never know the, the real reason. It's beautiful. Yes, great. That's really helpful. Also, the layer learning, really helpful for... for and, and you know, there are other things. I was talking to someone else who was here at the workshop, and she teaches people in a nursing home who are, who are suffering from different levels of dementia. And she worried about, she said, you know, I'm sometimes I'm troubled I'm just doing the same thing in front of them all the time you know and they're following me and I said oh no 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 don't worry about that that's good especially people with dementia so the people with dementia have problems with this newer brain but not so many problems with the deeper habit brain and maybe it takes them a little longer but you can access this habit brain by even more repetition. And you can access it even better. I said, I know this is gonna sound maybe a little crass or crude, but give them some M&Ms, you know? Combine it with the reward. You can tell us in class very easily, um, didn't you enjoy that? Isn't that, and most, we, all of us who are here are enjoying it, just the movement. But sometimes for some people in some populations, you have to give them something more direct. So give them some, some M&Ms. And, and, and I said, you may find that they'll, they'll do it on their own. Suddenly you'll be walking around and you'll see them just going like this. And she said, oh, she said, that's amazing. You said that to me. She said, years ago, um, when I was learning to play the piano, which is another one of those habits that's in the center of the brain, she said, I would lay out M&Ms on the piano that I could take <laughs> as I, as I you know, was progressing in my lesson. So, yes, this reward system, any way you can use it for people to motivate them, to find out what each person's reward is, I think is another important important aspect that neuroscience can can offer to help teachers teach this you are a great teacher by the way oh, and, thank you. <laughs> and the way you break things down and make it possible then for each of the steps to become rewarding because because they're repeated but also of course your enthusiasm is catching and how much you love it is catching. That's very important. It's really important. Thanks. And, and a lot of my teaching methods are based on research. I also have training. I teach doctors. And part of our training is how to teach doctors. In some ways, the same. Reward yes. them and appreciate them in one step at a time. Right. Right. So, yeah, wow, that's really great. From Another thing, by the way, that I've noticed that you've done is you said to people, uh, you know, you can, you can just go sit down and watch, you know. And, and as I said, that, yes, that works, that mirroring works. And I've actually been involved in experiments that show that you can just imagine walking. And most of the same areas in the brain that are active when you're walking are active when you're imagining it so yes in sports medicine they've they've shown this too and so imagining 
-hmm. can help too. Right. Yes. Right. Thank you. I'm so happy to to be confirmed that I have been doing the right thing. Yes, you have. You have. And I really love when you talk about one of your searches about people in deep love. Oh yes. So the fascinating thing about that is when I started the research, I said, oh, you know, this is an emotion. Some people said you'll never find anything consistent from person to person because we're all different and these different emotions. And I'm going to have to learn all about this, you know, this very complicated part of the human cortex and everything. Guess what? Romantic love, I now see as a survival system. I was telling you about the, the reflex systems here. So the areas of the brain that were active in everyone who was in love when they were looking at a picture of the person they loved, and this is true in Beijing as well as New York and London, um, the area of the brain that's active is here in this brainstem, in the brainstem. Not up here, not in this complicated cognitive area. No, this brainstem, this is, this is an area of the brain that is used by many other mammals for reward and drive and, and for attachment. We, this is a primitive, nonverbal, I won't say unconscious, I mean, this is the, the ro st sorry, this is the reward system it's the same system that lets you know that food tastes good or that water tastes good when you're thirsty. We need it. We need this system. It's related to, it's, it's actually the same system that's active when people are given cocaine and feel that euphoria. You know, when you're in love, you're euphoric a lot of the time. So that same euphoria, only it's a natural euphoria. Cocaine is this it, the drug has jumped onto this natural system that's deep in the brain here, reflex level, survival level. You need the reflexes to swallow to survive. You need this brain system to attach to someone else to survive. Yes, it's that important. That's why we need love to survive. Yes. People being isolated by the society die. Exactly. And, and that's why, yes, and it's, it, there can be, so we form pairs and pair bonds, and sometimes it's heterosexual and sometimes it's same sex, but it's still the same protection. You know, you still get the same protection and an advantage for survival. It's not just for reproduction, that's a great part of it, <laughs> but it's for support and protection too and yes we it's a it's a developed form of a mammalian it's not just human you know, of a mammalian drive to pursue preferred mates that's what we that's the way we call it that's what we say that's a phrase that helps us but it's that basic it's um, and it's evolved it's evolved, it's very complex in humans now, of course, and there are many different um, variables that have to do with romantic love, but that first, almost, that first infatuation, right, that, that is the same in everyone. Everyone shows that area. Individuals will be different. In their, some people show a a different attachment style. Some people like to avoid a relationship even though they're in love. They tend to want to pull back. Some people want to cling. So that's all here. But the drive to be with the other person, the drive for emotional union, right? That's here. That's a reflex level. That's a survival system. It's dopamine probably also. Wow. That's Amazing, thank you. And I learned so much, and I'm sure my colleagues and my listeners will feel the same. That you really help them to understand in in this amazing brain level, 
Yeah, it, the physiology is fascinating. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it really resonates with me being a, a medical person. Um, but then your specialist is so far ahead of what I know. <laughs> yeah, so that's wonderful. Right, the physiology I think gives everyone a, a kind of a grounded feeling. They know it's, it's real, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. It's physiology. Yeah. yeah.